I'm Kai Blenov. I'm professor in clinical neurochemistry at Gothenburg University. I'm also senior physician at the clinical neurochemistry lab, which is a clinical lab where we analyze uh, CSF and blood samples from patients. There are a number of uh, promising blood biomarkers for TBI, especially for mild TBI or concussion, that would be important because uh, today the definition of concussion is very vague. So it's more or less any type of uh, neurological symptom after a brain injury or, or um, hit to the head. Then that's uh, the definition of concussion today. What you n really need is to is a tool to monitor whether the neurons were damaged or not. And uh, there are a number of biomarkers that uh, show promise to identify neuronal damage and to predict also outcome after concussion. And that includes, for example, uh, GFAP, which is a glial protein, UCHL1, which is a neuronal protein, and also S100B and uh, neurofilament light. So we have uh, quite a number of promising blood biomarkers for TBI. So NFL is a normal axonal protein. And uh, NFL has been measured in cerebral spinal fluid for a long time. There it acts as a non-disease specific general biomarker for neurodegeneration. And using ultra-sensitive techniques, it's also possible to measure NFL in blood samples. And NFL levels in blood correlate very well with CSF levels, which uh, tells us that we can actually use uh, either a blood sample or a CSF sample f specifically for NFL. Uh, as I said, the NFL concentration is a marker for neurodegeneration in general and not for Alzheimer's disease. So for example, it's high in multiple sclerosis, where there are papers out already on um, monitoring treatment effects of disease-modifying drugs in MS. NFL levels also increase acutely, for example, with brain trauma or stroke or a specific uh, occasion that's uh, in cardiac arrest. Um, so uh, it looks like NFL can actually be a blood biomarker for acute neuronal damage. This uh, biomarker in blood has a much slower profile. So in contrast to GFAP, you see the increase not only after, not until after a day or two. And then the levels go up and maybe peak after a week or two. And um, I believe that this is uh, due to that NFL in blood after TBI reflects the valerian degeneration of the neurons, while um, GFAP levels uh, reflects the acute injury to glial cells. So uh, let's take uh, some examples of, of studies. So, so if we look, for example, on the glial protein GFAP, there are a number of studies showing that this uh, increases dramatically with uh, traumatic brain injury and also that we can uh, predict outcome using this blood biomarker. Uh, a good thing is that the increase is very fast, so it actually comes uh, within hour or hours or at least uh, within the first day, meaning that it has uh, potential to, for use uh, at the emergency unit or uh, intensive care unit or directly more or less after the TBI. So I think there are several clinical applications for blood biomarkers for TBI or acute brain damage. One is surely in sports-related concussion, because uh, especially with repeated concussions, for example in boxing, but also in ice hockey or other type of uh, concussions in sport, uh, you have not real tools today to understand whether a player have a neuronal injury or not. And this uh, may guide, for example, return to play guidelines. So how long 
should you rest at home without uh, activities w involving risks of new minor TBIs after you have had one. And that could be an uh, important application for sports physicians when they uh, examine their, their players. Uh, uh, you also have an um, indication for blood biomarkers in the emergency unit or at the intensive care unit. And this is to predict the outcome after TBI or even after cardiac arrest where you have um, a hypoxic brain injury. So there are, it's known from studies today that uh, very high levels of these uh, blood biomarkers, for example, GFAP or UCHL1 or NFL, will predict long-term poor outcome. So more normal levels would say that these patients will have a good clinical outcome and that is really important for the physician to have this type of tools to, to help the management of the patients.